In this video, we're going to talk about coordinate systems. Now, coordinate systems are things that we've seen all the time in the past, and I could have given you grid paper, like the grid paper I've selected here, and asked you to plot points, and this is a skill that, for the most part, we know how to do. But in this video, we're going to think about a coordinate system a little bit differently, and more importantly, we're going to see coordinate systems that are not the standard coordinate system. So, first up, I want you to think about a point like 4, 2 and how we would plot this. I'm going to imagine that sort of the slightly thicker lines you might be able to see are going to be the integer grid points. So for example, 4, 2, it's going to live up over here. That is, I'm going over 1, 2, 3, 4 in the x direction and up 2 in the y direction. Now, you might recall that we had standard basis vectors in R2, so let's plot those down as well. I had this vector, which was the E1, and it had its head at 1, 0. And then I also had the vector 0, 1 that we used to call E2. And then if I wanted to think back at what the, what's actually really happening with this point 4, 2, I can think about it as going to the right four times that's going along the e1 direction four times and then it's going along the e2 direction twice and that the combination of going to the right the four times then up to that is going to result in this particular vector the 4 2. so in other words a coordinate 4 2 can be thought of as an instruction it tells you go out to the right four times along the E1, and it tells you to go up two times along the E2. However, these are not the only basis vectors for R2. As we've seen, there's many different basis pairs of basis vectors for R2. Suppose, for instance, that you had this basis vector here. I'm just going to call it A1, but it has its tail, at, or its tip, rather, at 1, 1. And then this basis vector over here was going to be the basis vector a2, and it had its tip at minus 1, 1. Well, I could also go along the a1s and the a2s and end up at the same spot, end up likewise at that point 4, 2. Indeed, in this scenario, it looks a little bit different than I worked last time. I'm going to go out to the right along the a1 three different times. And notice that now I've gone most of the way there, but I've got a little bit too high, but then if I subtract one copy of the A2, I get back down at that 4, 2. So here's the point. There are multiple ways to get to this point 4, 2. If I have the standard basis, I'm going to go 4 in the E1 and I'm going to go 2 in the E2. But if I have some other basis, I'm not going to go and stretch along this other basis, 4 and 2. It's going to be some other amount. In this particular case, it's the amount 3 and minus 1. And in particular, the relationship of this 3 and this minus 1 is that the point 4, 2, that vector, well, it is written as 3 times the vector 1, 1, which you'll recall is our a1. And then I subtract off, so this is going in amount minus 1 in the minus 1, 1 direction. And that if you add those together, that linear combination, you're going to get to 4, 2. So what we're observing here is that the 3 and the minus 1 that we have here, these coefficients that tell us how to stretch the A1 and tell us how to stretch the A2, that those play the similar kind of role that the 4 and the 2 did to the standard basis. So given that we have a little bit of a different basis, I, I want to try to construct a new coordinate system, a coordinate system that is built out of the A1 and the A2, instead of a coordinate system that's the standard one built out of the standard E1 and E2. And to do this, I need just a little bit of notation. So I'm going to use a script B here, and this is going to stand for basis. And it is a set of vectors, and I'm going to list the different vectors in my basis. So in this case, it's the A1 and the A2. If you had higher number of dimensions, there might be quite a few more of these. And then my notation is going to be the following. I'm going to say that 3 minus 1, 
That's those two numbers that seemed important to us. Three minus one, but I wanted to note that they are in this new basis, that they're in an instruction of how to manipulate this new basis. So my notation for that is a script B down at the bottom. So I put my vector thought of as an instruction, and then I, I put a subscript that tells me what basis am I applying this instruction to. And so we can think of this as being precisely that 3, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1. That is what is occurring. And then note that this is the same thing as 4, 2 as before, but I want you to note the absence of something. What I'm not doing here is putting any subscript down at the bottom. I'm not putting a B underneath any of these vectors. And the reason is, if I do not put a particular basis that I'm writing down on my vector, it is assumed, we're all going to agree, that we're talking about it in the standard basis. That this 1-1 one, one that I'm referring to here is the instruction, I go 1 in the standard basis, 1 along the E1 and 1 along the E2. And the same thing for the minus 1-1 one, one, and the same thing for the 4-2. That while those are, are indeed vectors in a particular basis, that the basis is the standard basis. And so I don't actually write anything down. I only write down a subscript if I am not using the standard basis. So what have we learned? If I give you any basis at all, that this basis can form a coordinate system out of it, where you could take some vector like 3, 2, or 8, 7, or whatever vector you wished, and that if you thought of that vector as being so-called in this other basis, that you could always figure out what it should look like in the standard basis, that you'd write it out as this linear combination of whatever the basis has been chosen, and this process of writing it out as a linear combination and evaluating it to get the 4-2 that we have here, this tells you if you have a vector in a non-standard basis, what is that vector in the standard basis? 